So we got back late last night from a trip, and as you can see, it didn't go to plan. After a couple of years of being super reliable, the GU has been on the trailer twice in two weeks. We suspect it's got some bad fuel. We've changed a lot of the compartments over to try and get to the bottom of it. We think possibly we missed some, some fuel in the, in the system and it's contaminated the injectors twice. So we're going to get it down to the workshop, pull it apart and uh, see if we can get to the bottom of it. Good everybody, uh, we're down at the workshop, we've got the dough out. G'day everybody. Uh, we've only got the GU down in the workshop and we're pulling it apart trying to diagnose what the problem is. After a couple of years of pretty reliable service, it's let us down, or maybe you could say we've let it down over the past couple of weeks. Pete had it out on a trip in the high country, kind of up a pretty steep hill, and it stalled out on him and wouldn't stop. They primed it with the hand pump and that seemed to get it going. So we thought maybe it's a fuel pressure issue. Uh, it was due for a set of injectors, so we put a brand new set of uh, injectors into it. it. Made a little bit of difference. Then we replaced the fuel pressure relief valve, um, which is pretty common on these to, to be faulty. And it was better, but still it wasn't right. So we sent it out on its next trip. That's when the problems really started to come to fruition. It started with hard starting, led to stalling and then it got to a point where we just could not get it to start again. We got it back in the workshop, we checked the injectors, they seemed to be okay. Uh, we changed the fuel rail over, uh, that seemed to be okay. Um, the fuel filter all seemed to be okay. So we ended up replacing the fuel pump, which was quite a big job, a couple of days in the workshop. It still wouldn't start. So we went back to the injectors, checked the injectors, and we found the injectors were faulty. So we put the, we, we benched this, the old injectors, they were okay. Um, we put them back in, Car started, um, everything was good. So we sent it out on a trip and we had round two, exactly the same sort of thing. It started uh, with hard starting that progressed into just stalling out and then we couldn't get it to start at all. What we've diagnosed is bad fuel. In all my time of owning vehicles and going off road in the remote places, I've actually never experienced bad fuel before, so I never put a lot of uh, time and effort into upgrading fuel trading systems. In this case, it's cut us out. What we're doing now is we're cleaning out the fuel system. I'll show you some of the things that we've done. And I'm gonna upgrade the fuel system and make it bomb proof. As well as that, we've got a fresh set of injectors ready to go in. So once we diagnose that there's contaminated fuel, we pump the fuel out of the tanks. So we've got an auxiliary tank and a main tank. And the initial fuel that came out, it didn't look great, but it didn't look terrible. Put some methylated spirits into the tank, wipe it out, and then we, we suck that out with our fuel pump. And this is what we ended up with. You can see just all sorts of sediment and things like that sort of floating around in it. So we thought, well, we're on a winner. So that all come out. And because of the amount of trouble that we had, we thought we'd flush the system completely. So we got uh, a jerry can of, of fresh, clean diesel. We rigged the fuel system up to uh, be supplied from that jerry can. And then we ran the system. And what come back through the return line, so we got the car to start. Again, a um, bit of a start your bastard into the intake. That helped us to get the car started so it would run. We wanted to do that while the old injectors were in there, so we didn't damage the new one. Ran the, the, the fuel line a few times through, and this is what's come out of the, the tank. This is after we've cleaned the tank, but now we're flushing the fuel lines. Um, I'm just amazed at what's come out of that tank. So moving forward, we're going to fit a 2 micron pre-filter into the system. That'll pre-filter the fuel running into the main fuel filter and, and protect the fuel system a little bit better. A few moments later. So it's been a couple of weeks since we purged the contaminated fuel out of the system. Uh, we fitted a 2 micron uh, pre-filter down in the tank. Uh, we replaced the fuel primer bolt. The, the old one was looking a bit worn out, so we we're afraid that it might have had a bit of leak back. So we're fairly confident the fuel system is now bulletproof. It still wasn't starting as well as we would have liked it to. We tested the starter motor, and even though it was working, it wasn't working as efficiently as it needs to to get the pump to turn over. The last few months, we've worked the starter motor pretty hard trying to 
get the car to start um, repeatedly. So we replaced it with a 2.5 kilowatt starter motor. We noticed the wiring going to it was pretty ratty. So we replaced the, the wiring direct to the battery, earth direct to battery, and now uh, it starts really, really well. Once we got it starting the way we wanted it to, we noticed that while test driving it, there's a few flat spots in the RPM. So we put a boost gauge on it and we found that the boost was quite erratic. So we fitted a Tilix valve. What have we got the Tilix valve set to? 18 PSI? Hang on, look at the calculator. No stress? <laughs> I love stress. Yes, I need it this one. The Tilix valve cuts the boost off, we've set it to 18 PSI. And we've also fitted a needle valve, which helps to smooth out the boost curve. Now it's running really, really efficiently. So we've got a couple more things we want to do to this car before it goes out on its next trip. Uh, so we'll get those done, and then um, we'll show you what we've done. We good? Yep. Ah, oh, cool. So what have we actually done? Uh, so we replaced the injectors. We've replaced the glow plugs. We've replaced the fuel pump. Cleaned everything up. We replaced the starter motor. We're putting heavy duty battery cables um, down to the starter motor, so there's no voltage at all dropping out of it. So there's the Tilix valve that goes across, and the needle valve as well. Yeah, so that's the needle valve in, in front of the intake. We replaced the fuel timer pole. They've got a one-way valve in them, and if that fails. Pressure, it won't build pressure. We were messing around with the pre filter, but there's not really enough room here under the bonnet, so it's gonna, it's down the back. Yeah. And we're gonna we're fit, pump it back to Yeah, it. we're gonna put a low pressure um, pump just to prime the system. And that'll help when it's on the steep angles and the high country and things like that, won't it? Uh, it will help just keep fuel up to the pump. Yeah. 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 And that should be about it. I think that's all we've done. Cool. Apart from cleaning it, we've replaced all the fuel lines. Multiple, multiple times. Everything's on the Everything in the fuel system. There's nothing. Unless we need the fuel pump prior to all that tuning. Midway through. 